Hello there, I'm Sandy Alnock. Welcome to my YouTube channel where today we're going to do a little more World Watercolor Month, July 2024, by painting the leaves in the background of this painting. This was a commission, so I didn't film it all, but I did film those leaves so you can get an idea how to do positive and negative shapes. I'll show you how to do that. So this commission is one that I learned a lot from because I had had an idea for making this commission like somebody else's painting because there's you know a couple of floral artists who I love their work and I've always wanted to paint like that. I thought this would be a great chance to try it and I failed a couple of times. I had to start all over again because I was not successful in being someone else and then I decided I'm just going to go with my colors, my colorway, and that that alone made a huge difference because I went with more muted colors instead of trying for the kinds of colors someone else is using. And that's one of the things that will come as you paint more, you'll find out what kinds of colors work for you really well. And in this particular one, I had some Payne's blue gray and a little bit of green and a little bit of transparent red oxide in that background and had a little bit of red mixed in with it so that it's got that peachy feel but it feels very vintage and that's what I really ended up wanting. So for these leaves in the background I wanted some laciness around the outside and decided to go for glazed leaves and some of them are negative some of them are positive so I went back and forth between the two. But when you're making negative shaped leaves, you need to find a way to end the leaf. You know, where, where do you stop that brush stroke without creating a hard edge somewhere? So what I ended up doing was using some thinner mixtures as I worked from the area right behind the leaves and then out into the, the background color because I had to soften that edge enough that it didn't show up and it just looked like everything morphed out from the color that was there. And that requires at times just keeping really close eye on how everything's drying. So make sure that you watch for any hard edges that are appearing because even water, if your water is a little bit dirty, you can put a little haze of color into a background like this and really end up creating more messes that you have to then fix. That can be fixing by adding another wash of water and adding more leaves there or something. But it also can be done a little bit by using a baby wipe to just brush off the very, very edge and lift off just a small amount. But every time you touch it, once you get to that point, you're potentially creating another problem that you'll have to fix. So it's a delicate process and I just ended up, every time I got to an edge of something, I would zap it with the heat gun to just stop it from moving once it was where I wanted it to be. And that meant that I didn't get those hard edges. If you let it sit there, then you can end up with some hard edges. So play around with that and just watch it like a hawk. Because if you move on to another area, you could look backwards and go, oh no, now what? and have to go find something else. But I you know, went back and forth between using a number two brush, it's a synthetic brush, small, a number four brush that holds a little more water because it's a sable. And that gave me a little more ability to soften that edge and make it look like it was part of that cloudy background and worked much better. And then of course you can use baby wipes at, at the very, very edges. And a lot of times I ended up painting a large area of water to try to get it to the point where it was going to dry the way I wanted it to. And I would zap it with the heat gun again to just make sure that it's drying correctly. Once I got some of the leaves in there, I would paint a darker leaf over top of it, just with thick enough pigment that it would look like it's in front. And sometimes I'd do a third one in front and make something really dark. That gave me the pops of color that I needed to make all of those whites look really white because it's all white flowers. And what do you do when it's white flower after white flower after white flower? You need to find a way to make them look like they're white. 
and the first couple of paintings that I tried were these flowers on a white background and it was just not working. I don't know how these other painters make it so beautiful. I cannot seem to do that, but I loved the way that the background softened everything out and made it feel so vintage. So I was really pleased with this and the customer was as well. So if you ever need a commission and have something that will challenge me, um, I might take it on just for the challenge. Sometimes I do that even if it's not something that speaks to me. It's one of the reasons I hadn't taken commissions on for a long time is that it felt like a lot of the things that someone else wants a painting ordered of means something to them, but it didn't always mean something to me. So when you submit a photo for a commission, I often look at it and go, okay, could I get inspired by this? <laughs> but, you know... I, I took this one on because the photograph um, for the reference was absolutely gorgeous and uh, really enjoyed the whole process here. So once I had gotten this area with some of the leaves in it, I wanted something that was going to carry off the page. So I dove in with some even darker types of uh, leaves and, and branches and things out there. Uh, this whole thing reminded me of the branching out class. The watercolor class where it's a level two class but you learn how to paint leaves not always negative leaves like this but you know painting some really simple leaf shapes even though that class feels to many people like exercises those exercises can be used in your finished paintings as well so here I'm using just barely water to make these at the very top I wanted them to be super light and then used a baby wipe to make sure that edge didn't get too hard and then dried it immediately so that I could really make sure that that I uh, tidied up that area. So that is my finished bouquet. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something about it. Add some leaves to your next flower bouquet painting and I'll put some links to the World Watercolor Month page on my website. There is a coupon code over there if you're interested in watercolor classes and we're raising money for kiddos. So go sign up for a couple and let's be generous to the kids. I'll see you guys next time. And uh, in the meantime, get out there and paint every day. Bye-bye.